Yep, welcome back to the channel and it's a brand new series I'm starting a five episode screw the guide and we start with Aoba and it's an ideal ship to talk about what I want to talk about which is positioning in that first guide. And it's an ideal ship for that because yeah, that's kind of all what you have really. Uh, you do not have survivability is actually good. The speed is excellent. Uh, maneuverability is also good, but the guns only six two hundred and three millimeter guns. HE DPM is not there. Fires not there, and the AP DPM is also not very good. But you do get excellent Japanese torpedoes for 61 cm torpedoes, the best damage at tier 6 that you can actually use because you've got that excellent 7.5 km range unlike the Nuremberg who has 6 torpedoes, that's very good indeed, but only 5.6 km range. And so yes, your, your AA is non-existent obviously, so yes, positioning and speed it's going to be key to do well with that thing and let's take a look at the gameplay and the guide right now. And here we are, good division on our side, 4 DDs on the enemy team, pretty good, we are in a cruiser, unfortunately there is a CV staying concealed, it's going to be a challenge, but let's take a look at the gameplay. And so concealment will be the final topic for that guy, and when we will review the Zao, we start with the Aoba and positioning, it's absolutely mandatory with that ship. And with any cruiser in general, there are a couple of guidelines that you want to respect. First is actually to decide where you have to go on the minimap. That's a very good example. I am here with an EU destroyer. And those requires open spaces to do well, otherwise you tend to get stuck on islands when you maneuver. The rules are completely different with cruiser. With that EUDD, he should be going towards C instead of going to A. I am actually going to go to A. And there's a good reason for that, there are quite a lot of islands there that's going to give me some place to actually hide. It will make it harder for the enemy battleships to target and focus me. It's going to give me some room to disengage and finally I will be able to set up ambushes with my torpedoes quite easily. And it's the first question you should be asking yourself for any kind of line of ships is where should I go on the map? It's a very simple question but it requires a lot of thought and consideration. And so Japanese, you favor flanks, island, you want to use as much protection as you can and you want to set up ambushes with your torpedoes which is what we will be doing soon. You also noticed that I did not rush in blindly, I wanted to take a little bit of time to see where the enemy team was going and they're actually going right for me, the two battleships are right in front, that doesn't mean that I have to run away immediately. Instead I'm going to be a little bit aggressive and I'm going to charge into the cap, but I'm not going to do that, uh, I would say stupidly, I'm going to use it and do it in a way that there is an island between me and the new Mexico. So it's not only hiding me, it's making it harder to hit. He cannot shoot at me for that moment, so I'm pretty safe actually. 
and it allows me to be closing the distance. So I'm going to engage, I want to position myself in a way that there is always that island between him and me and when he's actually coming out of it you see that I'm starting to angling and bow tank my ship. So I'm putting myself in a position where he's not able to put a full salvo into me. But with two battleships right in front, I'm going to move again to position the island between the two of us. Unfortunately, even though I'm actually quite fast, I'm not going to be able to do it on time. That salvo of the New Mexico is going to hit me and I'm going to bow tank, basically. So I'm minimizing my target to make sure that I do not take full damage. And the New Mexico is not moving forward, but it's a very good example that Bayern is. And we are actually setting up a torpedo salvo right there. He's going to come out of the island. He has no idea the torpedoes are coming for him. And we're going to be scoring a couple of hits there. And now it's time to simply run away because we've done everything we could do in that position. We've there you go, four torpedo hits on the Bayern and a nice flooding indeed. And so we disengage, and we disengage, we run away again, we use uh, another island to protect us, protect us from the enemy CV who basically cannot put torpedoes into us that way, but also screen us from the two battleships right behind. Right now they are not in a position to be effectively targeting me. And I'm in a position to be dealing with that service. The CV does that for us. Very, very good job. And now we can actually turn around and see what's behind us. And so there I'm basically making a mistake. I'm being a little bit greedy. I'm showing a little bit too much broadside to those two battleships because I thought that range would be protecting me a little better. So I'm trading shells with that Maran. It's a very easy fight for me, but unfortunately, bam, there you go. I've exposed myself a little bit too much and now it's time to run away. And took cap B while we are doing that. Notice that I cannot use my concealment because the CV is keeping me spotted so I'm simply going to run away and if you cannot use an island as a protection why not use one of your battleships. Look at the battleship that's coming to be. I'm simply going to go in his general direction and use him as a meat shield. That's his job. He's a battleship. He's meant to be taking hits. I am not. I am a cruiser so I'm simply going to be waiting there moving forward by Backward, trying to dodge as much as we can and I'm going to keep the lowest profile possible to the enemy battleships there you go I'm a very difficult target for them now and now they have a new toy to be playing with that is my so you always want to be positioning yourself either around islands or around battleships or other targets so that you are not always the center of attention, the focus of attention and you always have, I would say, a way out of potentially dangerous or difficult engagements. And now it's a very easy situation for me, I can basically farm that new Mexico quite easily. And I'm going to turn around and position myself between the two battleships so that the Ismail is the focus of attention of the enemy battleships. There you go. And the other one is the focus of the CV. Unfortunately, the meat shield does not last forever. I need to run away and immediately I do that by shooting torpedoes. And I'm going to use the second battleship as a meat shield. You guessed it. And so I'm going to do that in a way that makes it a little bit more complicated for the other ships to basically target me because if they're using auto aim when you position yourself just like that you are an extremely hard target to hit. There you go, the CV takes the Bayern out so now there's only one battleship, one hard target for me that actually means one thing in terms of positioning. I only need to worry about the New Mexico and the CV. And so I'm going to be positioning myself for the next engagement using my speed to get as close as I can to the enemy CV. Because I know that it's going to be the next engagement that New Mexico is not going to last forever. He's not in a position to be challenging B and we do have more than enough points anyway because I capped two bases earlier on. And now it's us versus the enemy CV. And if you watch the intro, you know that I will not have enough time to basically be finishing him before the end of the game. There you go, that's the life when you're playing with the Alba. And that's also the end of the first guide of the series. Every single one is going to be focusing on a different topic. The next one with the Miyoko will be about teamwork and team play. And will be a little bit of positioning as well. 
And then we will talk about map awareness, super interesting topic when we reach the Tirei Takao. Ibuki will be about torpedoes and finally the Sao will be about concealment and bow tanking. It's going to be an interesting one as well. So there you go, I really hope that you will enjoy the series. It took me quite some time to set it up, but yeah, there are so many topics that you can cover when you talk about cruisers that you absolutely have to do it over different videos. And so why not use the Japanese cruiser line to cover everything? So yep, see you next time. That was the From Above signing out. Bye bye.